Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1133. Hey, if you want to download this workbook file, click on the link below the video. Hey, 1128 to 1131, we were talking about agent of accounts receivable reports. 1133, we're going to do yet another agent of accounts receivable reports. Now, in 31, we did a pivot table, but we talked about how when there's duplicates, the pivot table doesn't work because the pivot table by its very nature does an aggregate calculation. So in this video, we want to see how to do use the pivot table to create our report and create a unique identifier if we have to. Now, in this amended data set, this is a different data set than these other ones, hey, we have invoice number. That is a unique identifier. So even though there are some duplicates, and what we mean by duplicates is this deadbeat actually took two invoices out on the very same day, and it's going to be the same number of days late. So that would constitute a duplicate. And the pivot table, if we drop the amount into the sum area, it would actually sum these instead of listing both of them. So no problem. Now we have an invoice. We have a unique identifier. We will not have that problem. After we do our first pivot table with the invoice number, we'll see what to do, how to create a unique identifier when we don't want to have one in our data set. All right, now we're going to have to create a couple formulas. Now, days late. In these four videos, I actually did the wrong formula. I did the actual number of days until the due date. I did due date minus invoice date, and actually I left an annotation. So the, the simple formula for days late is not complicated. It's using the today function. Now, today will always give you today's date. I'm shooting this on July 16th, so that's going to deliver July 16th. Tomorrow, when I open the spreadsheet up, it'll deliver July 17th. So we're always going to take today, which is a dynamic date generator, and subtract the due date. That formula will give us the number of days it's been since the due date. Control Enter. Now, that's number formatting that's been sucked from our input cells there. And we want to get rid of that, so we apply the general format from the dropdown. Now, there's a keyboard for this. If you do lots of date and time math, you got to know Control Shift grave accent or tilde. Now, the grave accent tilde key on the US keyboards is to the left of the number one. So you ready? Control Shift grave accent tilde. And there we go. Double click and send it down. Now, we want our report label that we're going to use in the filter area of the pivot table. We have our lookup table here. Here's the lower number of days for each one of the categories. That's the reporting category we want to return to this column. So I'm going to use VLOOKUP. Look up days late as the lookup value. The table, first column, second column, F4 to lock that, comma, the second column. That's this reporting category. That's the thing we want to go and get and bring back to the cell. So I put a 2 to tell VLOOKUP to get the thing from the second column. The fourth argument, range lookup. We don't need the default is approximate match, which means it's looking up a number in a range in the first column. So the default is approximate match. We simply leave it out. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now, we have our unique identifier column for invoice number. But what would we do if we didn't have this? Well, the thing that's causing the problem is this name. It's listed twice. So if you drop it into the row areas, these will get added. So check this out. We're going to actually create a unique identifier ourselves. This is only if you don't have the invoice number. And we're going to use a text formula. Hey, I'm going to get the name. Now, Control Enter, that's just a relative cell reference. Copy it. But down here, what I'd like is I'd like a dash 1. And then here, I'd like a dash 2. Well, we can get those numbers by counting from this column with an expandable range. Let's click in H8 and hit the F2 key to put it in edit mode. Now we need to join that relative cell reference with the join symbol, Shift 7, and then count if. Now the range, we're going to do something tricky. We're going to create an expandable range. So I'm going to click in that cell A8, type Shift colon, comma, and then click on A8 again. There's our formula. The only trick is we want to 
lock the first A8 with our F4 key. Now, as we copy this down, that blue range will expand. That A8 is locked here, but that one is not. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And you can see all the ones, but look at that down there. And let's put this in edit mode and see how cool this is. There's that expandable range, that orange range. When I come down to the next cell, F2, it has expanded. So it only gets one when it sees the first one, but now it's allowed to count two. That is pretty cool. Now, let's scroll up here. I think F2, I'm going to add a space and a dash or something. So I'm going to, after the first ampersand, put double quotes, space, dash, space, and double quotes, and then a second ampersand. Now we're joining three things. One, text is the two, and count ifs is the three. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now that will work. Let's click in a single cell, and we're actually going to build our first pivot table off the invoice number. Alt N V Enter. If you're in two, that's for 2013 and 2010 and seven. It's Alt N V T Enter. All right, so now we want to get our invoice number for our first pivot table. Invoice number is going to go down to rows, and immediately I'm going to take days late and drag it down to the values area. Now I want to sort this, so I'm going to click in that cell, right click, sort, largest to smallest. All right, so the biggest ones are on top. Now let's continue building our report. We want customer name right after invoice. Ooh, I don't like the way that's looking. I want to change the design. So I'll go up to Design, Report Layout, and Show in Tabula. That'll show things in rows. I don't want these totals here, so I'm going to go up to Subtotals. Do not show subtotals. Oh, that's looking good. That sum date is no good. I'm going to hit F2 and simply edit this right in the cell, get rid of the sum of. Right now, if I enter it, it won't let me because there's already a field name like that. So I'm going to cheat and put a space at the end, Enter. All right, now I want invoice amount down. Actually, I think I can just click it. It will go right down to the values area. We have the same problem here. This one, I'm going to double click and open this up. I want to. Get rid of some of, but I'm going to put the extra space boop, right in between and then hit number format. And maybe currency. Click OK. Click OK. That's looking good right there. Report label down to filter. Right now it's showing all of them, but that's the trick. Notice here, let's double click this sheet 12 here and call it pivot PT in parentheses 1, Enter. Now the cool thing about this, as we saw in one of our earlier videos, is now we can go to Analyze, Options, and you got to be kidding me. Show Report Filter will create an individual report on each individual sheet for each reporting category. Why? Because the filter, whatever field you have in your filter, it will figure out what the unique list is and create a pivot table for each one of them. All right, so you ready? Show Report Filter Pages. It asks us which one. There's only one, so I click OK, and instantly I have my report. There's the report for 1 to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and even our 91 to 65. Now, that's pretty awesome, especially that show report filter pages. Let's go back over to 1133, Alt, N, V, Enter. I'm going to drag unique identifier down to rows, days late, F2, get rid of that there, and a space at the end. We can go to Analyze, Options, Show Report Filter Pages, click OK. you got to be kidding me. Look at that. The same report. Looks like we might have to change the uh, column width there, but that is amazing. All right, that's a little bit of fun with pivot tables and uh, invoice numbers and unique identifiers and creating aging reports. All right, we'll see you next video.